This is a watch review on the H2O Tiburon from H2O Watches. And um, forgive me if you hear crickets in the background. <laughs> I'm doing this in the back of my uh, car trunk while I have time. I'm quite busy, so I just wanted to get this out of the way. So hopefully it's not too distracting. Um, anyways, H2O Watch is a um, micro brand. They are, I believe, based in Germany. Uh, the name of the owner is uh, Clemens Helberg, I believe. And uh, he makes, I see he has been making quite a number of watches, but this is the one that caught my eye, the Tiburon. Uh, I believe Tiburon in Spanish is for shark. Anyways, there's a number of ways that you can configure this watch. Let's bring this up to the light here. And um, you just go to the website, you pick on it, and then you can choose, well, stainless steel case is all that you get. Actually, no, that's not true. Now he has offered a uh, bronze. It's pretty cool. But at the time, um, uh, you pick your bezel, well, your bezel insert. Uh, you can pick, uh, th there's a number of different styles. There's a 60 minute sapphire. There's a one that's like 45, it's a little bit different. Uh, there is a ceramic, I believe it's full loomed as well. This is actually full loomed. Uh, there is a stainless steel, which should be also full loomed, um, or at least most of it. And uh, I'm trying to think, is there anything else? Uh, and then there's, there could be some variations in the ceramic as well, like a, this style or 45. I don't know, um, just check the website, but this is the one I chose, and I'll make it apparent why I chose this particular configuration in a, while, in a, in a moment. There is, uh, you can choose your dial, the dial style. There's uh, basically this style, and I believe the other one is like a, what they call, some people would call uh, like an Eterna Contiki style. I consider it almost like a, what um, Zodiac has in their Seawolf. It's got the triangle markers with the numbers in them and then the kind of a, I believe it has like stick indices at the, where these would be the balls or the circles here. Um, you get like a choice of, at the time, either black, a black dial, or um, a radiant blue. This is actually a sunburst black. Um, it might be hard to tell right now, but it is. And there's a blue, and now since he added bronze, um, which is another material you can get for the bezel and the, and, and everything. Um, they have a green dial, they have a brown dial, and I think that's it. And of course in the different configurations, either like this, which I consider basically like a uh, Triton style, um, Triton Subfotique or Spiro Technique, depending if you're talking about vintage or modern. Um, they call it something else, I think like the S, S dial or something like that. Anyways, uh, and you get to choose your handsets. This is also the, I believe the S style, but I, this is very much like the Triton style of hands and with the lollipop like that. And there are, uh, there's just a bunch, like I think five other different styles. And you can choose your case back, which um, uh, solid or um, as you can see here, it there is a um, display case back with sapphire. And actually the one with display actually has uh, 500 meters over the solid, which is 300 meters. Kind of weird, you would think it'd be the other way around. And you can choose your movement. It's either the Swiss Etta 289, they're all 2892s, uh, but this is the elaborate grade or you can choose the top grade. This has uh, got some prolage work, a little bit more decorated, and with the top grade, I think it's uh, a little bit better tolerances for keeping accuracy, but I went with the elaborate grade. And you paid an extra $100, $120, or something like that for the uh, top grade, if you want that. And I think that's it. And at the time, um, I, with the pre-orders, you can get it with the five pack. Um, straps so you get this black one and you get uh, a black nylon strap it's kind of like a NATO style uh, but you can't use a NATO on this and I'll explain in a little bit uh, you get a, um, a nice mesh bracelet like this the class sometimes you get the ones that are just two pieces which 
work, but they're a bit more flim, uh, fiddly. This does has a bunch of adjustable links, so I took off all of them because this was huge with it. It's all the links probably fit a 10 inch wrist. It's crazy. <clears throat> And mine is 6.875, so, uh, and that's, that's where I'm at here, and that, that works just about right, and I pulled it in even some more with the micro-adjust here. Uh, you get, I think this is Horween leather, but this is pretty nice leather strap, and it's kind of, it's wide here, so it, it kind of matches the, uh, the width of the lugs, which is a nice look. It comes with this perforated one, kind of rally style, I guess. And lastly, it comes with this Horween, this other brown distressed Horween leather strap. Uh, pretty cool. Uh, you just get one set of spring bars, uh, so you're gonna have to reuse the hardware off of this for the other straps. This, mainly these, the other ones, these two have theirs, but this you'll have to use the spring bars uh, right there and there and there and there and there rather, and then reuse the buckle right there. And uh, that's that. I haven't had a chance to use these. I've had this watch for about a month. And you get a um, this dive case, which is pretty nice actually. Back it up, close all this. And you get um, the spring bar tool. It's actually pretty solid and looks pretty meaty up here. This will probably hold it quite well. Um, and you get a warranty card, which is good for, I'm not even sure. <laughs> I think it's at least a year, maybe two. Don't quote me on that, but at least you got that. And it's all packaged in here. Um, and go over the dimensions real quick. I believe the, the diameter across is 42 millimeters. And um, the lug to lug, it's because it's on a variable lug here on this end, because it's an integrated, um, crown guard for this at the 12 uh, and I'll talk about that in a moment um, it, it can it's actually pretty comfortable because you can vary from I believe somewhere around 48 millimeters to about 52.5 almost 53 um, but it's, it's very angular and it's very short actually you can see <coughs> excuse me <coughs> and you get uh, drill through lug hole so it's Strap changing is pretty easy. This tool that they give you does not have the pin, so you can poke it through. Um, I don't know why they didn't give you one of those. But you can still use the traditional spring bar to pull it here, but obviously most of us watch guys have a spring bar tool with a little something that we can safely poke into here to pop out the spring bar so it makes changing straps very easily. And this is a strap monster. Um, so I configure this the way you see it here to look like a uh, vintage Triton Spirotechnic. Uh, I really like that watch, but it's extremely rare and expensive. It was actually one of the, back in the 60s, it was one of the few dive watches that actually surpassed the cost of a Rolex Submariner. Believe it or not, it was made, I believe, by Dodane, a French company, and it was sold through... I forget the company, but I think Jacques Cousteau, very famous French diver, explorer, uh, he had a shop and everything, and that's where he sold these uh, through primarily. And so this was a pretty much a obscure but uh, serious dive watch for divers. You know, this wasn't mass marketed. Um, so, you know, if you really wanted a good dive watch, you probably knew what about this and got one of these. And... Um, what I was going to say, actually the French military used these at some point uh, for a number of years. So it's got a bit of French history to it. Well, the Triton does, not this H2O brand. But I like the tie-in with that design and the heritage of that. Today's modern Triton, it, it kind of, well, the Triton phased out. I forget when, but then it was basically bought by somebody in a, in Italy. I believe, or is it Swiss? <laughs> Sorry, I'm not, I should have uh, done my homework, but i um, just doing this on the fly. Basically, the Triton name was revived, the brand was revived, and they've created this sub boutique. And uh, it went from the classic 37 millimeters that the Triton was originally up to 40 millimeters, and, and it, almost identical to the original, but uh, some modern uh, updates to the way the dial looks. 
Um, they have two versions, one with applied indices and one that's printed. That's just the classic and I believe the sport. Well, actually, sorry, I believe actually the classic is the one with the with the applied indices and then the sport is printed and it kind of looks more, I don't know, vintage and heritage like but you get those options and you can got a bunch of colors and the case shape is basically this has remained the same with the same integrated lugs angles but i think the more modern one the triton Sephotique is just a little bit more angular on the ends and it has a really nice matching bracelet that goes with it those i wish i could get it's kind of a grail watch that's about four and a half grand versus the if you can even find a original vintage self would take that a spiral technique the other triton those last auction i checked was like eight and a half grand at least um so none of those for me are feasible because i spend no more than basically around a thousand dollars usually if it's over that it has to be a damn nice watch that, that i really seriously like but that's what it is so you can see here it says 500 meters um professional diver and it has triple gasket double viton viton v-i-t-o-n gaskets in here and there is actually a black one right in the middle as well so it's pretty well sealed all overall and that's a triple sealed crown and how you access this is um you just simply fold this down and then you just unscrew it and it just will pop up and you you set the time as normal this is running on a 2892 Edo. Uh, so it does have a ghost date position, but you know, yeah, this just doesn't have a date. They just wanted to make this clean, symmetrical, this is a serious dive watch. Uh, so you just have to pull past that or push hard. So it's not really hard to, to, to get around that, you know, you just, you just work with it. Um, what else can I say? Uh, so yeah, I just wanted to, I configured this to look like a Triton self boutique or rather the spiral technique the dial configuration is more like the spiral technique because the indices are a little bit closer towards the center of the dial in the vintage version uh, versus the modern one is more on the outside uh, closer to the perimeter you know at the outer bar just just before the you can see the minute markings or seconds markings depending how you read it right there and the other thing is maybe their vintage one these batons are just a bit shorter too um but that's would be the closest i was going to go with the blue one but i figure since this is more matching the vintage model which was black with gilt style uh gilt uh you know like gold uh indices well actually no it wasn't applied it was printed but maybe it had a little bit of gold it was gilt but definitely had gilt hands like gold hands i figure black would be classic and that's the way i went uh, blue is very modern. It looks very nice, but I figure maybe I'll save that when I actually do get a Triton sub boutique, a modern one, uh, in Atlantic blue. But we'll see when that happens. Uh, so this scratches that that need for that Grail watch quite well. It's a bit larger, 42, but um, overall the proportions are pretty good. It is um, only 12 mil, actually 11.9 millimeters, I think is the specs on uh, on the website with this um, case back. But if you get the solid one, it actually will be closer to 11 or 11 and a half. Just a bit thinner too, even. So it's, it wears quite thin, which is nice. It's been quite accurate. Um, I've been getting maybe between plus two and plus four seconds at most per day, give or take. Uh, with my usage, uh, the bezel action, sorry, it's quite good. There's no play in it whatsoever. It clicks really nicely. It could with use with maybe slightly, if it wasn't polished, it'd probably be a bit more grippier, but it's not hard to grip by any means or turn. Uh, by any means or to turn, it's, you know, you can see here and the gloom works really well i can't do it now because it's so bright but i'll try to throw in a loom shot at the very end i'll probably take it later at night or something when i'm back home i'm just doing this out in the parking lot <laughs> during a break right now uh well, i still have about 15 minutes so hopefully i can wrap this up around then so this is pretty cool i really like the, the, the angle it's kind of a mix of some people say it looks a little bit like ap royal oak meets black pond 
50 fathoms. I can see that. I like the angle. It's just very, you know, clean. It's all brushed on the side except for the high polish uh, chamfered edges here, or bevels, whatever you call it. Um, the sapphire is really well done. Everything lines up really good. <clears throat> Perfect symmetry. And trust me, this BGW9 looks, it's just, it just works so well. Um, you will not have t trouble reading this at all. Um, <clears throat> And let me give you a shot of this on the wrist, if I can. Take off one of my wrists. This is a Seiko SB, SCEB, sorry, I believe it's SCEB009. It's a quartz chronograph, but it's very cool, rare bowl head design. So, on the wrist, very comfy strap. There you go. We're just quite low and flat as it should. You know, it's 12 millimeters thick and it probably will sink into your wrist a bit. And uh, yeah, it's not too much of a gap in the, there either on my 6.875 inch wrist. I suppose it depends what strap you're wearing. Sometimes the, this thing could look like it's a little bit large. And I think for my wrist, about six and three quarters, just above. Anyone who has that, this will probably work pretty darn good, as you can see. Uh, that fold, that bending uh, link there still protects the crown guard, um, but it's you know it helps to kind of make sure it doesn't sit too wide on your wrist. You know, just, you've got skinny wrists, uh, and I say definitely seven inches and above, it'll be really perfect. Um, you know, this from this angle, it's not too bad. It does seem like maybe it reaches my extremes in terms of the top and bottom, but I think it's doable. But to be honest, it might be pushing my personal comfort zone and that's why I will be selling this very shortly. Uh, I really don't want to because I really love this watch design. But I think um, for me personally, after giving it about a month, just trying to to see if I can find a reason to keep it if it doesn't look too big on me. And I, I sometimes feel it does. I don't know. It's not really that bad. And, you know, it's, it's vintage and, and in some ways a dive watch is supposed to wear big. But, um, yeah. And you can see that dome sapphire. Really nice. Gives some distortion. So almost like old school acrylic or something. Um, I dare say that, I mean, this doesn't come with a, like a real link bracelet, but it's straight end links, so it wouldn't be hard to get that option. Uh, an Oyster, I would suggest a Hexad from Strap Code. I've used that and it looks really good on it, but I don't have it here today. I just want to show this so that, uh, whoops, so you can see what the package is all together uh, with this. Come on, focus. So, um, you cannot use, well you can, but it's not recommended to use a, uh, a NATO strap with this because the NATO straps go through and out this way and what happens is when it's around the wrist, that part of the, because the, the material is in here and then it wraps around this lug, once it's on your wrist, it will tend to pull it in this way. It's just the way it is because all that tension is being directed this direction, the way a NATO works. Single or double pass, it doesn't matter. So you could do it, but it looks kind of crappy. So what I would suggest is um, if you want that NATO look, you need to need to get that two-piece, that like something like this, what it comes with. Or what I like using is uh, the Watch Steward. They have a way of wrapping around where it doesn't go underneath here, so there's no layer. It kind of wraps around the outside, so the, the tension is, is directed out this way still. So this keeps the the lug like this, basically, more or less, and the way it should naturally look and keep the protection on the, the crown right here. You know, th th it just pulls around, just like a two-piece strap does. And uh, they're really cool, and they're not too expensive, and they've got some cool patterns. They, they look like the Marine Nationale style with a parachute, that's what they're made from, and they have a variety of uh, quality of that kind of elastic material, but um, I s highly suggest you go with those. Uh, otherwise, um, I believe Luff, L-U-F-F, if I'm not mistaken, straps make something very similar. Um, uh, if you can, with the watch steward at least, I have no experience with Luff, so I can't say too much about them, but from what I can tell in the scene, they look pretty much the same. But since I know watch steward, I would go with them. 
great service, quality, quick customer care. I mean, uh, it's very good. Um, I would suggest you can ask them to do the minimalist version, which is less fussy. You'll see what I mean if you don't understand how it works, but it, uh, it, it basically, you don't have to, it works much better than the standard uh, Stu uh, watch Stuart uh, configuration. Trust me on that one. And that's basically it. So you have actually a wide variety of, of strap options, you know, a metal link bracelet, mesh, uh, NATO like, either with two piece or like the Watch Stuart style, a parachute strap. Um, you know, it looks great on leather. And I, because this is, at least this one, is so deep black and shiny and clean, there's nothing on the side here and the, t the crown is tucked away so neatly. I think this would work pretty nice with a uh, crocodile strap like texture or something. Maybe one that's maybe even a little bit shinier because this is so like piano black almost. It's very classy. So I think that could, you can actually dress this up if you don't mind wearing a larger, slightly larger watch for a dress watch, but it's, it's very flat again, 12 millimeters or less if you get the, the version with uh, the solid back. Um, I think this could actually double as a dress watch. I have seen people wear it with a crocodile strap. The the Tritons they, they have. Uh, so uh, let's see. Have I covered everything? I think so. Sorry about the sirens. There's a fire going on somewhere and I need to be getting back uh, to where I was <laughs> soon. Uh, yeah, this is a great kit. It costs about just over a thousand bucks. Took six to eight weeks to order and get it in hands. And hopefully, because of the trades that are going on these days, you won't get hit with duty when it comes through. You never know. Sometimes you do, and you may pay an extra hundred or more because of that, depending on how they write it up and, and take it. Uh, luckily, I didn't, but it could happen to you. So... Anyways, I'm thinking of selling this if you're interested for about 950. I think it's fair. It's been a month. It's in great condition. Again, it's working perfectly. Uh, two plus two plus four seconds a day has all the extra accessories, which I don't believe you're probably going to be able to get now from uh, HTO because this was originally part of the uh, the uh, pre-order pack uh, when it first launched and. Uh, and uh, yeah, I just, I didn't get it then, but he was offering it because he still had about five at the time. And definitely people have ordered this watch since I got mine. So they probably don't have this anymore. So to get all this matching strap and everything, I think would be a great package for the, for just for around a thousand bucks plus shipping, you know, I'm charging 950 plus that. Uh, five straps and whatever 22 millimeter straps you got. Uh, would work pretty good on this too. Oh, works great on a rubber strap, which this is missing, but um, I th there's d tons of ones you can work with. This is a classic and neutral palette. Um, you won't have any trouble, um, uh, you know, finding a good strap. Oh, one last thing. Um, this is actually, as you see on the website, and maybe some other people, has originally configured to have this crown at the six. Um, I didn't like that. I mean, it looks okay. It would have been like kind of like this if you imagine the dial flipped. Um, I say the ZRC uh, Grand Fawn, Grand Fawns uh, watch. It's like a French watch, uh, another vintage one. You you will know what it is if you're into watch type watches and stuff. Um, it's kind of like that, that style. But um, I, I specifically asked uh, Clement to make mine with it at the twelve. I just think it looks better at the top and uh, it looks more even more so with in line with the uh, Triton subfotique or spiral technique uh, design I was trying to emulate more and I think when you lay it down you know this is slightly higher you can see so if you did lay it down flat you know I think it looks more appropriate that this end is propped up slightly even you know, even if you did this, but mainly if you leave it flat because this is a little higher, it's just angled that much more towards you instead of, if you imagine if it was reversed, it would be kind of angled away from you. So that's why I also went with the crown up here and uh, yeah. And it, to me, I think it makes more sense now natural for me to 
to wind, like set the watch up, I pull this back like around, flip it over like that instead, and then undo and, and wind, and set the crown this wind and set the crown this way versus if I have to flip the thing from the bottom and do it from the bottom. I mean, it's okay, but this seems more right to me. Anyways, that's about it. Um, I got to be getting back inside. Uh, make sure I don't miss anything. And uh, yeah, if you're interested, um, see if you can message me or leave in comments or look me up on uh, Instagram at Chrono Craze, K H R O N O K R A Z E. Um, you'll definitely see my pictures and know it's me. And you can you can message me through there or Facebook, which is Wing Yep W I N G Y P, which should be evident from my uh, uh, channel right now. I really should change the channel name to, to something more appropriate, to, like my uh, Instagram handle. But uh, it is what it is right now. So if you're interested, 950 plus shipping. Uh, otherwise, it will be on eBay soon, and we will see how that goes. Um, very cool watch. Uh, high quality, made in Germany, well, at least assembled in Germany as far as I can tell, 500 meters, Swiss Edda, elaborate great movement, um, very low profile, 12 millimeter stick. Uh, next common lug width is 22, 20 would be probably the most common. Uh, nice case. Um, you probably don't have to pay, worry about paying duties if you had to order or wait six to eight weeks if you wanted to try to order it too. Uh, this is a great classic vintage diver look that's very unique and if you tie it back to its history it's very cool uh, where it sits in the you know range of dive watches back in the 60s and the fact that this has some military uh, usage with the French uh, military as well at some point back in the days um, yeah I mean you try you could find the vintage spiral spirotechnic Triton spirotechnic good luck with the uh, over eight grand at least for one good condition and if you want to buy a new triton sub boutique very cool nice watch but uh it is at least better part of four and a half grand and uh, only certain places sell them i think i only know page and cooper does right now and pop maybe some other select boutiques but that's it um uh, great so great value for just about a thousand bucks or maybe a smidget under even with shipping okay thanks bye and I will throw up a uh, loom shut at the end of this at some point. So look out for that. Very nice loom. Very, very good. Okay, as promised, here is a loom shot. Looking pretty darn good. Let me just switch the angles here a little bit. BGW9, very good application of it. Of course the dial and the hands are the brightest, which are most important, but actually, even as thin as the uh, some of these markings are, the graduations on the bezel, they actually last too. So, um, yeah, everything of course would dim, but uh, with well-adjusted eyes, definitely can read all of this uh, pretty, all the way through night into the morning. Uh, not a problem at all. And again, it's very reactive, so um, it just you know it doesn't take much to really get it going. Even. A decent amount just so you can make the contrast of the indices and everything with the dial and you know it's just legible uh, let me see if I can do something here just trying to show you how I don't have a good way to simulate daytime <laughs> but you can get an idea of, let's see you want to darken it Yeah, super legible. I don't think you'll have any trouble reading the time. One of the best attributes of this watch, besides many. Uh, yeah, this is definitely, it says professional in the back, and I have little doubt that you couldn't use this for professional use in uh, dark waters. Uh, 500 meters, remember, all right? Cool, so um, yeah, uh, I am going to miss this, but um, super nice watch but I do feel that for myself it's just a wee bit big and I probably would prefer to transfer those funds uh, while it's still relatively new towards something else um, again uh, earlier I gave you my contact info 
uh, or ways to reach me if you're interested. Okay. Otherwise, uh, yeah, I definitely recommend uh, a watch like this if you want something different and uh, very cool. All right. Later.